Hey, what's up everybody? I'm Joe, and in this course, you'll learn how to get started with Rx Kotlin and use it in your Android apps. So what is Rx Kotlin, and why would you want to use it? Well, the basis of Rx Kotlin is something called Rx. Rx stands for Reactive X, which is a standard based on reactive programming principles that exist for several languages and platforms. Because all these implementations follow the standards set forth by Reactive X, your Rx skills are portable. You can apply what you'll learn in this course in any of these environments, and better collaborate with other Rx developers too, even across platforms. ReactiveX began with Rx.net back in 2009. Then came Rx.js, Rx.java, and several more. Rx Kotlin broke onto the scene in 2013. Now technically, Rx Kotlin consists of Rx Java bindings for Kotlin. Thanks to the very tight interoperability between Kotlin and Java, you can call the Rx Java library directly from Kotlin code. Rx Kotlin is a Kotlin layer on top of Rx Java, adding lightweight extension functions to Rx Java that make it even easier to work with from Kotlin. You'll also hear the term Rx Android, which, similar to Rx Kotlin, consists of bindings for Rx Java that make it easier to work with Rx Java from Android code. I'll tend to use the term Rx Kotlin loosely and generically in this course, instead of Rx Java or Rx Android, but I'll try to point out Rx Kotlin and Rx Android specific code when it's relevant. So at this point, you know Rx Kotlin is based on the ReactiveX standard and is a layer on top of Rx Java. So what you will learn here will be useful in many other platforms. But what is Rx Kotlin already? Rx Kotlin is an asynchronous programming library that is based on using observables. And observables are just sequences of data or events that you can react to, such as data coming back from a web service or even taps by a user. By the way, these are called marble diagrams, and you're going to see lots more of them throughout the course. The horizontal lines represent time, and the circles, marbles if you will, are data or events that occur over time. Conceptually, that's basically all there is to it. And just remember that pretty much everything in Rx Kotlin is an observable sequence, or something that reacts to it. By using Rx Kotlin, you can get all zen-like about your code, like the dog here. What Rx Kotlin enables you to do is write asynchronous code that is way more streamlined and easier to follow than using the various patterns and APIs you may be used to using from the Android SDK. For example, here's some Rx Kotlin code that responds to a user tapping on photos shown in a recycler view limits the amount of photos to six, filters out portrait mode photos, adds and removes the photos from a cache, and more. The code is declarative, and the flow of logic is much more concise and organized than it would be if trying to do all these things in a non-Rx manner. This just scratches the surface of how many ways Rx Kotlin will make your code easier to write and maintain. In fact, I bet you'll lose count of how many times you go, oh cool, throughout this course and in using Rx Kotlin. This course is primarily for Android developers who already feel comfortable with Android and Kotlin, but are complete beginners to Rx Java and Rx Kotlin. If you're looking to use Rx Java and Rx Kotlin in other environments, such as on the server side on the JVM, you'll still get a lot out of this course, and you can decide to skip the Android-specific videos if you wish. Here's what you're going to learn about in this course. In part one, you're going to see how to set up IntelliJ IDEA and Android Studio projects with Rx Kotlin. That way, you can use it in your own projects. Once you've learned how to start from scratch, the rest of the course uses starter projects with Rx Kotlin already installed to save you a bit of time. In part one, you'll then learn about various observable types you can work with, how to create them, and how to subscribe to them so you can react when they change. By the end of part one, You'll also work with the Android architecture components view model and live data. Live data is sometimes used instead of Rx Kotlin, but you'll see in this course how they can be used together. In part two, you're going to jump right into working with observables, starting with how to filter data emitted by them. You'll also learn how to create your very own custom observable, how to share observables to make your code really efficient, and how to manage concurrent threads really easily in Rx Kotlin. Part three, it's all about manipulating and converting data that comes from an observable. And finally, in part four, you'll learn how to merge data coming from multiple observables into one, 
including how to work with data coming from multiple web service downloads asynchronously. You'll wrap up learning about additional resources to continue learning about Rx. By the end of this course, you'll be able to both use Rx Kotlin and Rx Kotlin compatible libraries, such as the Retrofit Networking Library, in your Android app projects. I need to give a big thank you to Scott Gardner, who created the Rx Swift course on which this Rx Kotlin course is based. I've stuck as closely as possible to the approach and code used in Scott's Rx Swift course, in case at some point you'd like to take a look at both courses to see just how portable the Rx approach is across languages and platforms. Scott based his course on his Rx Swift book, which he co-wrote with co-authors Florent Pillay, Junior Bontanali, and Marin Todorov. So a big thanks to the four of them for making this course possible. One last note, a spoiler alert, if you will. We make references to Star Wars throughout the course, just to keep things interesting. And even if you're a longtime Star Wars fan, you may pick up some interesting new trivia along the way. Okay, with that, your exciting adventure into the world of RX awaits. So let's get started.